Pastor Patricia Hamer, our senior pastor Rodney Hamer and I would like to welcome you to Abiding Faith Christian Center Thursday Bible Study. Our mission is establishing, empowering, and maturing lives to fulfill God's divine purpose. Our vision through the teaching and preaching of the word, we will reach the lost, bring restoration to backsliders, give hope to the hopeless, healing to the afflicted. We will bring believers to spiritual maturity, enabling them to impact this world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are located at the Liberty Center. That's 1428 West Court Street, across from Powers High School, Flint, Michigan, 48503. Everyone is welcome to come to our services which are on Sunday at 11 a.m. and Thursday, 6 p.m. Bible study. If you're close by, you can still run in and hear the lesson for tonight. Pastor is continuing the series on the book of Ephesians, and we thank God for who we are in Christ and our position in him. Let's receive our pastor, Pastor Rodney Hamer. If you would turn with your Bible to the book of Ephesians, what we've been studying from the book of Ephesians, praise God. We studied Ephesians, the first chapter. We went through Ephesians, the second chapter. We're in the book of Ephesians, the third chapter. And oh, how wonderful it has been uh, of hearing and seeing the revelation knowledge concerning the truth, uh, concerning us, our positions, our possession, praise God, and our purpose. Amen. Okay, in the book of Ephesians, the third chapter, we, was, we stopped at verse number 18. We have finished up on verse number 17 several uh, Thursday Thursdays, uh, Thursdays nights ago. And we'll just read from verse 17 into verse number 18. So in verse number 17, it says that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. Paul praying the prayer, first of all, that the believers would be, that they would, that God would grant them according to the riches of the glory to be strengthened with all might by his spirit in the inner man. That was his prayer for the Ephesian believers. And then he prayed that Christ may dwell in their hearts by faith and that they become rooted and grounded in love. Amen. Amen. He wanted them to become, he know, he prayed that they would become rooted and grounded in love. And in verse 18, he said the reason why is so that they may be able to comprehend and to understand the nature or meaning of or grasp with the mind or perceive with other saints concerning the knowledge of the love of Christ. Now, in the verse of Scripture, it may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height. So I'm just telling you what this means when it says the breadth and length and depth and height. That is to be able to... to uh, comprehend, to understand the nature or the meaning or grasp with your mind, your intellect or perceive with other saints in the body of Christ concerning the knowledge of the love of Christ. Why? Because we found out that the book of Galatians, the fourth chapter, verse 11 says that faith, faith, faith worketh by love. Amen? I believe that's what where it was in, in uh, Galatians. No, in Galatians 3, 11, it says, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident for the just. No, that's the just shall live by faith. That's, that, that wasn't correct. Let me go back here and look again. I might have been right the first time. Uh, faith worketh by love. Faith worketh by love. What verse of scripture is that in the book of Galatians? Hallelujah. For faith worketh by love. Is it five and six? Oh, you're just guessing? Yeah, that's where it is. In, in, in Galatians 5 and 6, you don't have to turn there, but let me just read it. He said, For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. So we see that our faith can only work by our walking in love. Amen. Amen. Let me say it again. Our faith, our faith which releases the power of God so that we might get wealth, so that through him we, he might establish his covenant, can only work proficiently except when you're walking in love. They go hand in hand. Can you say amen? amen. In fact, sometimes it takes faith to walk in love. <laughs> uh, do you agree with that? Sometimes you just got, sometimes you just got love folks by faith. Yeah. Amen, <laughs> Sister Beverly. I mean, you, I mean, praise God. I mean, the more you get around, the more you be exercising your faith. Oh, Lord, I thank you for the love of God in me, for this brother, sister, or whatever. Amen? Because they really don't have what that would uh, generate that love, you know what I mean, towards them. Amen? 
that it does generate some 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 emotions and passions that want to choke them to death. But you know, praise God. That's why we got to do it by we got to do it by faith. Amen. Yeah, because that's what the word of God, that's what love is. It's believing and acting upon the word of God. And we saw that from the scriptures. Let's kind of look at a few scriptures in here. We saw Philippians, the first chapter. I think we left off at that particular verse of scripture. Or we shared that verse of scripture last week. In the book of Philippians, we read that Paul was sharing with the Philippian believers. And he talked about their love abounding towards one another more and more. This is in Philippians, the first chapter. And verses 9 through 11 he says this in verses 9 through 11. He says, in this I pray. So again, Paul is praying for the Philippian believers. As he prayed for the Colossian believers, as he prayed for the Ephesian believers. He's praying for these believers right here. He says, in this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge. Oh, in knowledge? What do you mean in knowledge? Well, because you have to have the knowledge of God's word to walk in love. Remember, Jesus said over in John I think it is in the 13th chapter, in, in verse number 13, where well, he gave a new commandment that you love one another. But then over in the book of John, the 15th chapter, in verse number 10, he says, If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Can you say amen? amen. It is keeping the com word of God that caused you to, to, to walk in love. In fact, 1 John, the second chapter, I think verse number five says, Whoso keepeth his word, verily, truly is the love of God perfected or matured inside of him. That's in 1 John chapter 2, verse number five. Whoso keepeth his word. Jesus said, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide. The word abide means to take up residence, to settle down in, to have a constant, stable existence in. You know, you know, one of the things I've learned, like in the scriptures, the scriptures, we're going we're we're to see that. I'm not going to get ahead. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians 13 chapter. It's, it's the, the measuring tape for showing whether you're walking in love. So I'm going, to, I'm going to forego that statement I'm going to make. Man, look at verse number 10. Verse 9 says, In this I pray that your love may abide yet more and more knowledge and all judgment, that you may approve things that are what? Excellent. In verse 10, that you may approve things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense. See, God doesn't want us to be offenders. He doesn't want us to offend someone else, does he? No, no. Amen? Amen? It's not the will of God for Christians to go around offending one another, much less offending people outside the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not talking about the offense that they take because your light is shining, because you're letting your light shine by your manner of lifestyle, and then they get convicted because of it. That's a whole different thing. You, you can't, you, that, that's not your problem. That's right. their problem. Amen? They just been, they're just convicted of sin. But I'm talking about you going doing something that will cause an offense towards someone else. So he says that you may approve things that are excellent and that you may be sincere and without offense. Listen, till the day of Christ. Now when's the day of Christ? When's the day of Christ? When he comes back. That's the day of Christ. And one day he's going he to bust through the clouds, praise God. And you're going to be doing something. You're going to be unaware. You're going to be going about your business and stuff. Just, just fulfilling the will of God. Or maybe you be on your job, you know, and typing on your, you know, your computer or something. Or, you know, you know, doing your accounting work or shoveling or hammering or whatever you may do. And all of a sudden, Jesus is going to appear in the cloud and there's going to be a sound of a trump. I mean, all of a sudden, you're going to hear something. Do -do -do -do! And then the sound of the trump, and then the dead in Christ are going to rise. And then we, which are alive, all of a sudden, boop, we're going to be right, we're going to rise up in the air. And then this mortal, this death doomed body is going to put on, it's going to put on, it's going to put on a, uh, a, this mortal body, death doomed, going to put on immortal, immortality. That means it won't be no more death. It won't get old anymore. It'll stop aging. It'll be a new body, praise God. <laughs> this corruptible will put on incorruptible. Oh yeah, it's gonna happen in a blink of an eye. No, that's that's a clap. A blink. <laughs> blink of an eye. Yeah, that fast. And you won't even be aware of. I don't see why God don't do that for me. Well, you, you need to watch. Maybe that's the reason right there. 
You're so easy to become envious of someone else and God <laughs> sees that and he's waiting for you to get to the place where you renewed your mind with the word of God and you put your will into in, 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 in submission to God's will which is his word and says I'm not going to be envious. Now maybe you were raised up that way but that's the way you, that's the old man. See, the old man, the, the old way is your, what you have in your mind. It's not your flesh. Your spirit's not that way. That's why you feel miserable when you act that way on the inside. That's why Christians walk around with no joy because they're, they're walking after the outward man. And their inner man, the real them, is grief. Your spirit is because your flesh is dominating you. Amen. So you have to practice God's word. Be doers of God's word, not just hearers only. If you keep my words, you shall, if you keep it, if you do it. Well, how do you do that, Pastor? Just make your mind up you're going to do it. <laughs> now, I know it ain't easy on the flesh. And when you don't renew your mind, you keep watching all that other stuff and reading all that other stuff and hearing all that other stuff and hanging around the mother and folks that don't walk in love. Then what happens is you start association brings about what? A simulation. I know God's hand is upon you. That's what love does. Can you say amen? Oh, isn't that good? Well, praise the Lord. You know, I was going to do an altar call, but my time is really running slow. If you are out there on the Facebook, if you're out there on the uh, video recording, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want you to know that you can do it. There's going to be a screen that comes up at the end of this broadcast. It's going to show you how to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus sent his son into the world to save the world, not to condemn the world. The world is already condemned just because they have not accepted Jesus Christ and his sacrifice for their sins. So they're already condemned. If you die in your sins, you're going straight to hell, which is forever and ever, which was made for the devil and his angels, not for man. So if you read at the end of this broadcast, there's going to be a prayer that comes up in the prayer for you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you will become born again. Well, I want to thank you, those of you on the Facebook, those of you on Periscope, for joining us. If this message has, if this message has been, a, been a blessing to you, you can write in, get a copy of this, le this uh, message. Also, if you uh, are viewing this message and you'd like to give into the work of this ministry, you can give into the work of the ministry at the website, which is www.abidingfaithchristiancenter.com. And as I said, I'm Pastor Rodney Hamer and my beautiful wife, Pastor Patricia Hamer, we're the pastors of Biting Faith Christian Center. If you're here on Facebook, on the website, and you have not a church home, we want to welcome you to come down and join us here at Abiding Faith Christian Center. It's better when you're here than you're watching out there. Well, remember John 15, 7 says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. God bless you, and we'll see you next time.